The money machine has been seized. The Treasury has taken over the Federal Reserve printing press. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin is in charge now. What kind of person is he? Well, he made a killing taking people's homes after the 2008 housing bust. Let me add that here. And the government is taking control of businesses during this national emergency. The Fed balance sheet surpasses $6 trillion to infinity and beyond. National debt, $24 trillion. All that and more today in today's report. Hey, everybody. JJ here. You're watching Bull, Boom, Bear, Bust. It is Friday, April 10th. It is Good Friday. And I hope everyone is well. And I know a lot of people are not well here in the United States and around the globe. As we are seeing massive job losses and just financial fiasco, uh, monetary mayhem, and uh, debt disaster just unfolding rapidly. So what do we mean by the Treasury has taken control of the Federal Reserve printing press? Well, now the government and the president no longer have to try to nudge the Fed, so to speak, to issue new debt and to buy unlimited amounts of securities and monetized debt, including mortgage-backed securities. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to basically take over the Fed and that way they can do as they wish but in a more speedy fashion because this is a national emergency. This is what makes this possible. That and the Defense Production Act, which also allows the government to essentially take over and dictate what businesses do and what they manufacture. We see it with 3M right now. They have to manufacture now medical products. So this is what's being declared as a national emergency. This is a wartime type of power that the government now has over the financial markets and it's now merged with the Fed in this particular instance we'll see how long this lasts it'll be interesting to see if this continues beyond the national emergency state that we're in right now now the reason the Treasury is working with the Fed or has taken over the Fed in this instance is to bail out the financial industry the banks who are basically saddled with a lot of bad assets and loans that are not going to be repaid and that are quickly falling behind on their payments. So they're losing value. The problem with that typically is the Fed is only allowed to purchase or lend against securities that are government guaranteed, including treasuries, agency mortgage-backed securities, uh, debt issued by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. It is unlimited. There is no limit. And they even came out and said they will do whatever it takes to stabilize, uh, stabilizes in quotations, to stabilize the markets. So to put this in simple terms, the Fed is giving the Treasury access to its printing press. So they can print money at will without delay. They can buy securities. They can hand out loans and bailouts. In this case, unfortunately, they're bailing out corporate America, large corporations, but small businesses, they get a loan with interest attached. Isn't that interesting? So let's take a couple steps back here and ask the question, could this be used to help people? Well, absolutely it could. They have unlimited funds available. Are they going to bail out and support the people? Or is it going to be corporate America? Is it going to be Wall Street over Main Street once again, just like what happened in 2008, but to a larger extent, to a worse degree? Well, the person in charge, Steve Mnuchin, Let's take a look at some of his background here. He made a killing taking people's home back in the 2008 housing bust. Now, this was outlined very nicely a few years ago in this article out of Politico. And just an insane example that they used here, I should say not insane, but a sad example of what they used here was Steve Mnuchin was on the board of a bank that took a 90-year-old 90 90 -year woman's house after missing her payment by 27 cents. Right, So a 27-cent payment error this elderly person ended up getting foreclosed. Now an analyst over at the National Consumer Law Center said this about that situation, quote, we're just coming out of a foreclosure crisis and a series of economic downturns. It's not the time to appoint someone who sided with corporate America over real America, unquote. Now back in 2009, Mnuchin became the focus of consumer activists as Mnuchin and his partners bought the remains of a failed mortgage lender, IndyMac, the company had specialized in high-risk loans, including liar loans, to borrowers with no money or income, unverifiable assets. And at that time, they had become a symbol of Wall Street recklessness. 
Now, the FDIC shut down IndyMac, but Mnuchin and his partners swept in to buy what was left, including all the bad loans. And the number of homes that were seized came to about 36,000, according to some estimates. So have we not learned anything from 2008? Why are people being so passive? Why are more people not outraged and protesting against not just this individual, not Mr. Mnuchin, but just the entire system, how it puts corporations and corporate America, Wall Street, over Main Street? And look at the assistance that's being sent out to the working class, to American people, uh, $1,200 per person. It's not going to last very long. But a lot of people that are actually paying attention do think that it's pretty obscene that the Fed, and now in this case the Treasury, can bail out whoever they want to in unlimited quantities. They can funnel funds to wherever they want to, and it's all done in secret. They don't have to disclose where the funds are going. Now, maybe there will be a new level of transparency with this new occurrence of the Treasury essentially taking over the Fed, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, let me know what you think about it down there. But this looks to be bad, bad news. All right, speaking of control, the government can also now take control of businesses during this national emergency, the Defense Production Act. All right, this is an absolute takeover of pretty much the entire economy. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the Fed balance sheet surpasses $6 trillion. That's going to go to infinity and beyond. I was going to put up a Buzz Lightyear picture, but we'll pass on that for now. And let's jump over there to take a look at the chart. And we look here to the far right, and we see it now at 6.083. That's 6 trillion, 83 billion, and some change. And if you look at the steepness of this surge, of this uh, Fed balance sheet increase, we have already surpassed the financial crisis where it went from about 800 billion up to a little over 2 trillion to begin with and ultimately climbed all the way up to over 4 trillion. The problems were never fixed. The financial crisis 2008, millions of people lost their homes, that should have been the wake up call that these people were not on our side and instead of coming in and draining these people, these people are now even more in charge than they were back then. To me, it's pretty scary. And now with this collapse that we're in right now, I think most people are going to be so desperate and destitute that they're going to be even more unlikely to blame the bankers. It's kind of hard to go to uh, the corporate offices of the banks and protest when you don't have a job, you don't have gas money, and you don't even have food if you're like many people right now in the United States. Right, so this crisis happened right at the right time, right when the, the financial system was actually coming undone. And we have to ask ourselves, you know, how convenient was this timing for this crisis to unfold right now? All right, let's wrap it up here with the U.S. debt clock. If you did not know, all of the news sources that we talk about are over here at our homepage. If it's not in the actual, um, underneath the video that we have on the homepage, just look in the left column and we have hundreds and hundreds of links, all the links that we've ever used to all the new sources and we see the debt clock is here and we have surpassed 24 trillion dollars folks this can never be paid back it's impossible the Fed was never able to unwind their balance sheet as they bought all of those bad assets from the banks this is what happens when you have an unlimited printing press the individuals that control the printing press they get to pick the winners and losers this is not a free market this is not capitalism Remember, for capitalism, you have to have the government out of all these activities. It's supposed to be the private sector and private businesses that make the economy run. The government's not supposed to be involved. We've been way beyond capitalism for over 100 years now, in my opinion. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. None of us do. But something tells me that after November of this year, there's going to be some big big changes in this entire system. I see a national bankruptcy being declared and we do have the king of bankruptcy right now sitting at the head office and it's very likely in my opinion that he was put here for a reason. Right? US bankruptcy, all the debt gets wiped away and we start with a new system. And this transition could be very painful. Is that definitely going to happen? Well no, I'm looking out, I'm forecasting what I see 
but let me know what you see. Where does this end? Does it end? Is it going to continue to be debt to infinity where corporate America keeps taking more and more? And then down here on Main Street, more and more people become homeless, destitute, and ultimately it's the government and the corporations that own everything. That would be a worst case scenario, but maybe many of you feel that's going to happen. Uh, please let me know. Thank you for watching the support, everybody. Happy Good Friday to all. Hope you're well. Please give us a thumbs up if you like what we talk about here and subscribe if you haven't done it already. we got some more big news coming up on the housing market. We might get that out Sunday or Monday, maybe Saturday. We'll see how it goes. We hope to see you again here soon on the channel, everybody. Bye for now.